Well, good morning, YouTube. 11th of January. Beautiful sunrise. A little R&D this morning. Let's see if it works out. And I've got my crank of crabs. Since there is no fiddlers, I'm gonna try me some crank of crabs. It's just gonna be a totally play it by ear, doing what Dave wants to do. What's that old saying? Right species, wrong size. Float rig fishing. Well, maybe I'll get some keepers. I've been uh, tossing around my crank of crab. I haven't done nothing on them yet. Very light. This one's very light. It's like 3 8 ounce. Oh, God dang. The green scourge. Green scourge. See what the hell this is? Sandbagged me. Is it a keeper trout? Does Dave get to eat tonight? All right. Right species. Finally, right size. Right size. Man, I'm trying out these. I haven't used these in it in like forever in a day. I'm using these little number four kales but that's a little number four kale eagle claw kale or kale design or wide bend design i don't know yep 16 and a quarter Finally, finally, when all else fails, the failed go float rigging. That's my theory. And I always say float rig fishing, you need to be five to one or better. Really helps out. These are six to ones. These fish aren't in their usual place. I'm fishing right back to my, where it's the usual place and they're not there. All right, that's a 16. Not really. Sweethearts. Sweethearts are 17, 18. 17, 18, 19. 18, 19. God dang fish are in front of the boat. Oh man. Literally off the bow. A lot of throwbacks. Kale hook, sure do lip latch them. Yep. Number three out of about 10. I'm only allowed two more because Florida is a tree hugger trout state now. Let's let's hug the leaves. Look where I'm having to fish. I've been cast all the way to the bow of the boat. Oh, there we go. In the bow of the boat. Can you imagine that? That's god dang green scourge again. God, I hate wasting bait on these son of a guns. Well, at least the shrimp are bigger than they were the other day. I mean, we had some that would last one drift on the hook. All right, let's try up in the bow again. These fish do some serious moving. They're there, then they're there, then they're over there, then they're over here. And I'll tell you one thing I don't like doing on a float rig when there's blues around, I don't like having to pitch. Because I think sometimes that splashing, a blue hears that splashing and it makes a beeline for when your bait's sinking. And you get an instantaneous bluefish bite, the green scourge, versus just drop it over the side and letting it go. All little things that you kind of notice every once in a while, you know what I mean? The battle of the shit fish. There we go. 
sandbag the hell out of it. Oh, it's a flounder. No wonder. Potato chip. St. John's brand potato chips. Come on! Go grow up. See, people don't realize I'm out here right now and I know exactly what I'm doing. And it's taking forever for me to get a trout limit in between all the other BS. Okay? My guys the other day, <coughs> we spent six hours or seven hours working on a limit of 10. I mean, <laughs> that's the way it's become. I mean, some days, that's just it, man. The people that make me the most frustrated are the ones who think I'm going on a guided trip. Now all the fish are behind the boat. I'm going on a guided trip, and all the fish are going to just jump in the boat because I'm on a guided trip. I'm on a charter. Wrong. I'm in charge of tackle, bait, boat, safety gear, license, cooler, and ice. There we go. Okay, maybe this is a keeper. Um, that's all I'm in charge of. I'm not in charge of the fish. The fish are in charge of the fish. This is going to be another short. The tide's dying, so I really want to try my crank a crab. Man, I'm telling you. These damn kale hooks, they sure do lip latch the living hell out of me. I've always used little tiny number four 3407 mustads because you can practically pull a truck with them. And sometimes on these big ass redfish, that's what you need. See, he ain't gonna make it. Yeah, he is. Alright. Should I try for bigger? I don't think so. I'm of the school bird in hand is better than two in your bush. Time to go find a nice little spot to fish the crank crack. <laughs> had a bite on the cranker crab. I might have to consult some super sheep headers. Haven't even had a bite on it. I've pitched it, I've cast, you know, cast it. I've flipped it around a dock, pilings. Um, now I got an egg sinker on it because the current's running too strong. That might be one of those La La Land, South Florida lures, you know, where the water's clear. The fish can look at it and actually see. Hey, that's a crab. Around here, it's all by this, I believe. So, I don't think the old crank of crab's going to do me any good. The sheep said things really kicked in my ass this year. I was doing great when we had fiddlers. That was back in the first week of December, I think. I mean, I can see it. Maybe if you got them all chummed up and then they're, you know, they're just really going crazy. Uh, then you probably could get them to bite that thing. Probably work better for redfish than it does for, for sheepshead around here. I really wanted to concentrate a little more on sheepshead this year. I got a great start. Catch a drum on fiddlers. Had days where we had 12 and 14 sheep said but as soon as no fiddlers then boy did that end because I really don't catch many sheep said on shrimp until spring and then we're catching them on float rigs while we're trout fishing had many a 10 pounder in the springtime on floats you know what I equate this crank-a-crab to? It's 
especially here in Bizarro World, Florida, it's just like the DOA shrimp. I mean, you can mess the trout up and everything on a DOA shrimp. But the circumstances have to be really right. I mean, for somebody like me, I'm not, you know, Joe Flatskiff, you know what I mean? Even when I had bay boats and I had a 17 Carolina skiff, we used to tear them up on DOA shrimp. I've caught a lot of fish on the DOA at the jetties, up in the creek, in the river. I just got to figure this thing out. It's, a, it's exactly like that. It's very, very, very realistic presentation. But if you don't have the situation right, like around here, I mean, the tide just screams. So you gotta fish it someplace where the tide ain't running so hard. I'm thinking out loud, this ain't Australia. This ain't South Florida. This here is bizarro world. <laughs> I haven't even had a, had a fish even bump it. And I'm putting my, I don't even know, this is what every, I've had this for years and years. Uh, Procure uh, super gel inshore salt water smelly jelly stuff. I use this on my micro jigs, you know, if I'm jigging or whatever, you know, vertical jigging, whatever. But I want to catch a sheep's head, and I'm, I'm about to put on a goddamn shrimp. I, I try to be a cool guy. You know, every once in a while, I try to be a cool guy. <laughs> Next, I'll be putting a polling platform on the back of the boat with some power poles. That's what I thought. Small yellow mouthers. They were just doom, popping it like no tomorrow. Beggars can't be choosers. I'm having a hard time casting because I hurt my shoulder. And it went away and now it came back where it hurts like hell. So let's see what the story is. This is all I seem to be able to get. Weak fish. Which, I mean, we don't, we certainly don't stick our nose up at these. But between these, the little sand perch, the pinners, and the mangrove snappers, whoo! I can see why you'd want to use a fake crab or fake something because they're eating me out of house at home. All righty, last shrimp on this meat fishing extravaganza. No sheep's head. No bites on the crank of crab. But I am whacking the yellow mouth, which we call weak fish. I'm whacking them pretty good. But they're not big. Using the old Daiwa beef stick and the 7.4 to 1 gear ratio Daiwa Ryoga Bay jigging. 30 pound Hercules braid, 1 aught Mustad 3407 hook, and a half ounce egg sinker knocker rig. Bam! There he is. Goddamn baby Jack Craval. Woo! He didn't get the message to go south. Okay, let's see what I ended up with. We got a good bag of fish. I got my five specks. And then I got... And then I kept six yellowmouth. Mayport noise pollution. Alright, time to make the donuts and until next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I almost forgot. I got a Bubba Blade to try out. Let's see how Bubba does. All right, every knife, oh man, every knife works great when it's brand new. Okay, 
too stiff, I can tell already. I'm not used to that. Too stiff. Just a lot stiffer than the blades that I usually use. I mean, by no means are these big fish. Oh, well that's the second one that I cut right through because I'm having a hard time feeling. These trout are very, very delicate. Okay, very delicate. Look at that, I'm slicing right through, leaving the tail and everything here. Very, very stiff. I guess they, they probably do make a blade that's a lot thinner. I mean, thinner this way. This is just the one that my buddy, Orowalk, donated to the channel. Commercial kitchens, you'll see this. This to me is bells and whistles. This isn't much of a beating. A beating would be cleaning, you know, a whole bunch of black drum with this. I'm holding it and I never even noticed all these little grips. This is totally useless. You don't need this. You don't need this. I mean, put your thumb there. I, I'm holding it and I don't even, I never even paid attention that my, my handle was so egronomic. Yeah, look at this. Every single time I'm not feeling it. I don't I don't like this for for doing these little uh, delicate trout. I use super thin, thin, super ground down to nothing. Dexter Russells that I showed you in my other video. As far as sharp, it's working. As far as egronomics, don't care. Let me show you pencil neck, my little, my buddy. There's pencil neck. Pencil neck actually responds to my voice. And literally I can say something to it and it looks, it just looks at me. Where's my free food, Dave? All right, well there's my, uh, Bubba Blade first reaction.